Right, this is the first in the short video clip series for organic, for AS level OCR chemistry for the unit F322 and we're going to begin with organic chemistry. All right, uh, organic chemistry is really pretty simple when you follow it through quite logically but there are a number of things that we need to learn so that we don't find ourselves stumbling I suppose. Uh, so without further ado, let's talk about what we what we can what we're gonna be able to do by the end of this clip. Now this clip is based as I said on OCR so you'll find the page references on the OCR AS level textbook for chemistry on pages one on six and one on seven. Okay now by the end of this clip you're going to be able to describe the two ways a covalent bond can be broken and you're going to learn a whole bunch of new terms. <laughs> yes Mo I'm afraid um, we'll come on to those as we move along. So let's talk about the two ways that covalent bonds can first be broken. Now it's known as obviously fission, right? Homolytic fission and heterolytic fission. So what is homolytic fission? Now this is a definition that you need to know, right? Uh, and it's the breaking of covalent bonds with one of the bonded electrons coming to each atom forming two radicals. Now that's pretty simple. The one bit that you'll be unfamiliar with at this point in time anyway is this word radicals okay so what is a radical well let's talk about that let's just say we've got a species a b essentially homolytic fission is when the shared pair from the covalent bond right the shared pair of electrons right we've got a pair there's two one electron goes to the a one electron goes to the b a radical is simply a species with whoops, a unpaired electron. Now the way we show a single unpaired electron is just by doing a dot. You'd recall that when we did stuff like um, intermolecular forces, hydrogen bonding, we had water and we represented water as the oxygen in water as having two lone pairs and we showed it as two dots for one lone pair. Very simple for radicals because they're un a single unpaired electron, we just draw a single dot. Right, so we've got species AB, it's broken up into two radicals A and B. This is known as homolytic fission. Okay, each atom has an unpaired electron, therefore, homo. Now, he <laughs> heterolytic fission is simply very similar. Right. What do you think heterolytic fission may be? It's pretty same. It's pretty much the same. It follows the same scenario, where in homolytic fission we had each one electron going to each species A and B. In heterolytic fission, we've simply got let's say the same species A, B, right? But in this case, let's say what happens is both of the electrons, both of the electrons right are taken by one of the species okay by one of the species the covalent bond is broken with both of the bonded electrons going to the same species in this case let's say it went to the a atom we would then have a and b right? because a has got two and a lone pair of electrons and electron is negatively charged, we show this as A negative. Essentially, B has lost an electron, right? So it's going to be positive. So you can clearly see that in heterolytic fission, we have formed ions. So homolytic fission produces radicals and paired electrons. Homo heterolytic fission produces ions, okay? So it's the breaking of a covalent bond with both of the bonded electrons going to one atom. And rather than forming little radicals, it forms ions. Dead simple. And again, you need to know the definition for both homo and heterolytic fission. And those are the two ways a covalent bond can be broken. Now here we come to the point that I promised you on um, naming some, well, rather defining some key words and key terms. Uh, and I'm sure you're sick and tired of this by now, but 
It's just one of those things, I'm afraid, right now. Nucleophile. What is a nucleophile? A nucleophile is simply an atom or a group of atoms that's attracted to an electron deficient center of our atom. An electron pair donor to form a new covalent bond. Right now, this sounds like a lot of gobbledygook and the definition for electrophile is very much similar. You do need to know this definition, right, as unattractive as it seems and sounds and looks. However, the way to recognize these is, I suggest just remembering it as, for example, a nucleophile is simply an electron pair donor. Now, I'm unsure whether OCR will accept that in the exam, so do make sure that you learn the definition as it's shown there and in your textbooks. But for now, let's just remember that a nucleophile is an electron pair donor, and an electrophile is an electron pair acceptor. Yeah, that is all there is to it at the moment. Right, so let's talk about this in a little bit of detail. How can we recognize nucleophiles and electrophiles? Well, we've got a selection there of uh, 12 species and we're unsure what an electrophile and we're un how do we recognize what nucleophile is, what an electrophile is? Well, let's go back to the definition. Let's go back to the simple definition of a nucleophile being a uh, do, 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 an electron pair Oops, donor, right? An electron pair, pair donor suggests it's got an excess of electrons. Hmm, so let's go back. Excess of electrons, well, the electrons are negatively charged. So, if they're negatively charged, a good indication of something being an electrophile, sorry, a nucleophile is, if I've said elect electrophile, it's supposed to be nucleophile before, sorry folks, a nucleophile is a negative charge. So, which ones have we got which are negatively charged? Bromine, chlorine. We've got cyanide, NC minus, something we've not come across before. Now, is this all? Are these all the nucleophiles that are here? Well, not quite. Because you'll remember that nucleophiles, we have that definition an electron pair donor. An electron pair donor. Think about H2O. Let's think about H2O. What's missing from there? Well, we kind of talked about this, haven't we? A lone pair of electrons. Well, it's got two lone pairs in this case. Because it's got a lone pair, two lone pairs of electrons, it can donate either one of those. So that's a nucleophile. Something else in this on this slide is very much the same. NH3. It's got a lone pair of electrons. It's a nucleophile. Uh, ooh, we've missed out the hydroxide ion. I'll never manage to miss that out. Obviously, that's got a negative charge, so that is also a nucleophile. Now, let's talk about. Oops, uh, cut, seem to change color. Oh well. Um, electrophiles. Well, I'm just going to put E for the electrophiles. Electrophiles are electron pair acceptors, right? If they want to accept electrons, and electrons are, of course, negatively charged, and they want to accept it, well, surely a sign of something being electro an electrophile is possibly something of a positive charge. So, electrophile. Electrophile. Oops. Uh, electrophile. Now, We've got three remaining, HCl, Br2, I2. Now, I'm not going to expand on this too much just yet, right? Because possibly in the third or fourth clip following this, we're going to talk a little bit more about electrophiles and nucleophiles as well, but specifically electrophiles. So let's talk about why HCl, Br2, I2, Electrophiles, let's start off with HCl, uh, it's going to make the most sense at this point. HCl, 
You'll remember, in terms of electronegativity, chlorine is more electronegative, therefore it's going to have a delta negative. Hydrogen is less electronegative, it's electropositive, so it's going to have delta positive. Now, chlorine, because it's more electronegative, uh, it's going to pull the shared power of electrons towards itself. Right? It's going to pull the electrons towards, therefore acquiring a delta negative charge. Now, in this particular case, you could say HCl is a electrophile because of the actual hydrogen having a delta positive charge. So in this particular case, it can act as an electrophile. Now, I don't want you to think too much about it. Right? This will become a lot more apparent later on. So don't worry too much about it. As long as you can recognize that we've got electrophiles and we've got nucleophiles, you're fine. Right, you're pretty much fine. That's all you need to know. Right, okay, so you've kind of belabored that point. On towards the introduction to simple organic reactions. Okay, so we've got three types addition, substitution, and elimination. An addition reaction is, as the name suggests, when two reactants combine together to make one product. Okay. And it's when, for example, a reactant is, and it's specifically when a reactant is added to an unsaturated molecule, an unsaturated molecule to make a saturated one. Now you remember that unsaturated is multiple bonds, and saturated is single bonds only. So let's start off with ethene. It's the most common example ways, right? And we've got something such as, uh, let's say, bromine. What happens is the double bond, right, essentially breaks. We'll talk about this again, as I said, in another clip quite further along. And we've got bromine added across the double bond. Okay, we've got uh, one to ethane, right? So that's one two dibromal ethane because we've got one two dibromal ethane. So nothing hard. It's pretty simple. Don't worry about how it does this. That comes to another lesson in its entirety. But what you can see here is got, we've got two products and two reactants on the left making one product. Okay. We've got an unsaturated on the left going to a saturated on the right. Done. Right, okay, so what is a substitution reaction? Well, again, as the name suggests, it's something which is going to substitute. It's when a atom or a group of atoms is replaced or substituted with a different atom or group of atoms. Uh, so let's talk about this. Uh, let's say we had, um, let's say we, oops. Let's say we had bromoethane. So very similar to what we had earlier just now, but we just got the one bromine. Bromoethane. And let's say we had it in the presence of uh, a hydroxide ion. OH minus. What happens is, in this particular case, we've got the bromine and it's substituted, replaced by the OH group. So where does the bromine go? Well, the bromine is just here. And an ion, a bromide ion. Done. Right? We've got bromoethane over here going to, plus a hydroxide ion, it goes to a alcohol, in this case it's ethanol, going plus a bromide ion. Nothing too hard, we've just substituted that with that, right? So we've got that there now, that there, done. Finally, we've got the elimination reactions, and elimination reactions are when we will actually eliminate a molecule from a saturated species to form an unsaturated species, right? 
So let's talk, now again, saturated is something with single bonds only. Let's talk about what we just had, for example, because it works quite well here. Let's say we had, uh, ethanol. There we go. What happens is, in the presence of a acid catalyst, right, um, it is uh, changed, or it, what, what, what's happening is, sorry, is by removing a water molecule is changed into a unsaturated molecule, right? And I'm sure you can guess what that unsaturated molecule is going to be. If we're removing water, we've got the hydrogen there, put the OH there, makes H2O. So we're gonna be left over with a unsaturated species, in this case being ethene, as shown there, plus H2O. That is it. That is it. So in this short clip, well, I hope it's short, I don't know how long I've gone for, uh, we've talked about organic reactions. Right, we've talked about how to break a covalent bond. We've talked about homolytic fission and heterolytic fission. We've talked about electrophiles and nucleophiles. We've talked about addition reactions, substitution reactions, and elimination reactions. Now, this is literally the basics of organic reactions, and you need to be able to recognize these bits okay so hope this helps uh, I'll move on to the next clip in a separate one fantastic see you there